Hickok 45. Wow, what an interesting looking table. Yeah, comparing, guess what? Colt single actions with the Glock. So that's what's on the table. Here's one right here while we shoot it. Because I know a lot of you are trying to decide right now on your next or your first carry gun whether it's going to be a Glock or a Colt single action. Just like this. Let's put around the chamber. Let's shoot the paper over here. Yeah, that's a pretty viable choice. What about the Colt single action? Let's try it. Oh yeah, it works too. <laughs> yeah, that, not, that wouldn't be a bad choice either, right? So we're going to explore because I want you to make the right choice. All right. So, uh, so what are we doing? Yeah, we're trying to help you decide on a carry gun. Actually, we're not. <laughs> well, we might be. <laughs> We are just kind of going to explore, have a little fun today. And we're going to make all the Colt haters and the Glock haters uh, have a great day, right? <laughs> but it has occurred to me over the years, how, and, and I think other people, the similarities between the Glock pistol and the Colt single action. And you're thinking, whoa, so you're crazy and maybe some other people too? Is that what you're saying, Hickok? <laughs> Well, think about it. If you are a firearms person, enthusiast, and have been for a good while, this very thing might have occurred to you. Uh, so, at first glance, they're seemingly about as different and as opposite as you know one can imagine. But in some ways, they are similar, and that's that's why I wanted to talk about. It, all right, not just another chance to love on Glocks or love on Colts. So even though you know I do like them all, uh, if you hate. Colts, you hate Glocks, you know, you can go watch some cartoons and we'll have our fun, okay? So anyway, what about some similarities between these two? Here's the Glock 17. You know, kind of started with the Glock 17. Uh, this is a Gen 4, and I've wrapped up the grip and everything, but it's a Gen 4. And uh, this is a Colt single action right here in one of the early models. This one was made in uh, 1883. You know, in the seven and a half inch cavalry, you know, model that was the first one, 45 Colt uh, for the U.S. Cavalry is adopted and everything. So that's the way they started out, pretty much. And this is the way the Glock started out, pretty much. Glock 17, okay, in you know the early 80s. So we got the <laughs> 1980s, we got uh, the 1880s and 1870s uh, actually with the, the Colt. So how are they similar? Obviously, there's some differences that jump out at us right how about capacity you know five or six versus 17 or 18 you know uh you know the, the slow to reload of course you've seen hopefully lots of videos that we've done with the cold single action you got to unload them and load them you know through the loading gate so they're they're slower right no kidding more recoil generally on these i would guess yeah in most cases depending on caliber and all that the weight they're going to be a little heavier a little heavier to carry and all that and of course you got to cock it all the way back to, to fire it so you know fire follow-up shots are going to be slower you know that sort of thing's pretty obvious right so the differences are pretty obvious so i guess the reason we're having a little fun with this today is to mainly point out the similarities if they've never really occurred to you and again, it could have been a Smith & Wesson M&P or anything else. You know, uh, I fully admit, SIG, you, you name the Ruger, the, the companies, a lot of great polymer pistols have been made in the last 30, 40 years, right? But we all have to admit, whether we hate them or love them, or we're neutral, that the Glock has filled so many holsters in the last uh, you know, 30 years. Uh, just as the Colt single action did in the 1800s. And there were other firearms then too, you know, no kidding. There's Smith & Wesson, the number three, all those, you know, and then even before these, uh, the uh, Navy 51 Colts were immensely popular. You know, the 1860 Army, we can name a lot of uh, the percussion models that were really popular. The Smith & Wessons uh, in the cartridge guns, uh, you know, the number three, the Schofields and, and all those were, were also very popular. But from all my reading, not just from watching Westerns, <laughs> the uh, Colt single action really did rule the day in terms of numbers, okay? 
the people who are actually experts will claim that Mike Venturino, different folks. Uh, but uh, so that's kind of where I come at this from. If you go back into the 1873, 1880s, you know, these things, uh, they dominated, you know, the cold single action. The Smiths were popular, but these things were simple. They were powerful enough and uh, they, they worked. They were not all that hard to repair and you could replace springs and things in the field. They weren't quite as complex, I think, as the Smith & Wesson. And they were just immensely popular. Of course, they were adopted by the military and that made a big difference. So was the Smith, just not in big, as big a number, right? So, not just in the Western movies, but in, in reality, back in the day, these were immensely popular, they're prolific, okay? The cold single action, and it came out in this format. And, uh, and of course, we all know that the, the Glock 17 in this format, this length and capacity, when it came out, it also was revolutionary, uh, sort of, I'm going to say, you know, uh, I mean, both of them in a way were revolutionary uh, to some extent. They're both based on earlier designs, but they're, they were different, right? They were different and they were kind of improvements and they were so popular you wouldn't believe it right well actually you would if you've been around a little while <laughs> let me let me shoot it again i got some ammo yeah there's a glock 17 mag all right and one of the reasons that they're both models are so popular is they're just very shootable now you may not like the grip and i have some complaints <laughs> that's why it's all wrapped up like that about the glock grip but most people that pick these up uh they find that they can shoot them pretty well you know, even, even new shooters. You've probably seen many of you people that you introduced to shooting, maybe it was a Glock 17 or 19, and they just, they were surprised that they're able to shoot it pretty well, you know? And then again, the Colt, I've got this one out because it's a third generation, the Davy Colt to, to actually fire. I didn't want to fire the black powder necessarily today. And the, the original, I've done it before and we'll do it again, but today I wasn't going to do that, but uh, uh, I mean some ammo. But the Colt is known for its ergonomics as well and how well it shoots. And, and it, it just, you know, Colt's always been good at that. And, you know, the 1911s or whatever, the early percussion revolvers, they just fit your hand like a glove. And uh, so again, shootability. And that's important. That's one reason they became so popular. They're simple, simple in design. They work, uh, feel good to most people. They felt good to most people in the 1870s and 1880s. And so it's not a mystery as to why they uh, really took off and, and sold so many. Because it's, uh, it's you know, you vote with your dollars. There's, there's usually a reason something's popular. You may not like it. I might not like it. But if a lot of people do and they buy it, then it, it's going to be you know, selling a lot of it, right? Uh, the, another similarity is they both will smoke pot. Really, I promise. See, we'll try the other one maybe too. They'll both kill a two liter. Woo! Will they? They'll also bowl rather well. Wow, did you see it roll that thing? It's hit a, oh, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it again. <laughs> Got my elevation wrong. But they both just feel great and uh, just really shootable. The ergonomics, when you, most of you have picked up a single action, doesn't have to be a Colt, does it? Uh, and that's another similarity. There are a lot of uh, copies when something is really successful, right? The world comes around and tries to copy it. And a lot of people have copied these because they feel so good and they just work. Right, and the same with the Glock to some extent. They weren't the absolute first polymer pistol of this type, but they were close. And there have been so many pistols come around that have have copied it. Right, so some other similarities. I don't know. It's uh, they're they're also both very prolific in the movies and TV, aren't they? You know, the westerns. You know, my gosh, John Wayne, White Earp, Bat Masterson. We could name all day long actors and real life, uh, you know, sheriffs and and, uh, and whoever. Outlaws that carried the Colt, and same with the Glock. You know, it's been so popular in the movies. You know, we could name, you know, all kinds of people. Arlie Ermey, how's that? Tommy Lee Jones, uh, and then your buddies, <laughs> you, <laughs> me, John. A lot of people carry a Glock or have carried a Glock. 
right? Even though, again, there's so many great polymer pistols out there today, but you know, we're kind of focusing on the Glock and how it just sort of swept uh, the country, uh, the planet, uh, in, in a lot of ways. And it's just been so popular with so, so, so many people, you know. They're both, uh, see, even the bug likes it, the little worm, you know. Uh, well, or maybe he doesn't. He's going to leave. The, the other thing, too, is they're all, both of them are priced reasonably. You know, you, most people could afford, I think the Colts sold for, I don't know, 17, 18 bucks or something, 20 bucks, I don't know, in the 70s, which might have been, I don't know, it might have been more expensive than a Glock today. That was probably close to a person's monthly wages, some people, or at least a couple of weeks, depending on what they were doing. Cowboy, what did a cowboy make about a buck a, a day or something like that? I don't know, but uh, but it, affordable. You have to save up for it. Same with a Glock. Even if you're uh, minimum wage, you know, eventually you could save up and get a Glock. You could get some others, you know, uh, for less money, but yeah, you, know, you got that going, right? So affordable. Not necessarily easily affordable, okay? So a lot of similarities, uh, fairly reasonably priced, simple in design, both of them, they're famous for being simple in design and, and durable, you know, they just work. It might break a spring or something in an old Colt, but you put a new one in and you're back in action. Uh, hadn't happened much to me, it's happened once, I think, and uh, simple to re replace. Uh, they're myths, myths, they're similar in myths, you got myths about both of them. Uh, and that's true with anything that's so popular, right? If a lot of people are involved with it or have them, there's going to be all kinds of stories, negative and and and, uh, and positive. Uh, you got the myth. What's uh, you got some myths about the old Colt? Uh, how they were, you know, so powerful, uh, you know, that they just stop anything. Charging grizz and all that. They really weren't. They weren't a 44 Magnum, but they're they're powerful enough. They won the West. Uh, I don't know, not really. I think most historians and experts will say the probably the shotgun won the West. A lot of that was marketing, uh, or the Winchester 73 or whatever. You know, every gun that Winchester came out with, I think, was the gun that won the West. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of that was marketing. All the guns together won the West, whatever that means, right? But the shotgun did a lot. Uh, these guns, you have miss. Oh my gosh, uh, one of the big ones early on was that it would go through metal detectors if you were around back then. And all that did was help sell them because it, it, it got so much publicity from that. I, I remember it well. And uh, the newspapers loved it. The gun haters loved it because they, did, oh yeah, you can't get that through an airport metal detector. They thought with this high capacity, they didn't like, you know, anyway. So, oh, that'll kill that pistol. You know, that'll never sell. We'll get rid of that one. Didn't work. It was pretty quickly uh, and easily proven that uh, I think there's more metal in a Glock 17 than in a like a Smith & Wesson J-frame or something. And then they showed x-rays of them and everything. And that was debunked pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. And I guess one of the other myths is that they just go off. You know, we've all heard that. And that, that's still, you hear that occasionally. Somebody had a Glock and they're dangerous. And there's a lot of people, some of you watching maybe, you think, uh, I'm not selling Glocks. I don't mean to sound like that. But that, uh, or they carry that police force or whoever had carried Glock pistols and uh, there was an accident, uh, the officer was reholstering or pulling it out or doing something and it went off. Oh really, how do they do that? They have a striker blocker and you know, they don't just go off. They go off when someone puts their finger on the trigger or gets something caught in the trigger and you know, pulls the trigger somehow, right? So, so there's lots of myths with, the, with both of them. Just lots of similarities. The most obvious, the biggest one is, uh, and I'll shoot them one more time maybe, but that they, uh, they so prolific, they dominated a period of time in history, okay? In like personal protection or military, you know, both of them are used extensively uh, military, police, and civilian, yeah, just extensively, really. And the other thing, too, is and, you know, these were the original. I'll, I'll, I'll move that one because I don't want to confuse the issue. The originals were the big ones, right? The full length barrel. And pretty much, I mean, that you know, Glock makes even a longer barrel and all this, but even in butt lines, you can get one with a longer barrel. But generally, these were the first models. And then as they became more popular and more in civilian use, you had the, like the Glock 19, a little shorter, right? The compact size came out. And uh, same with the Colt. You know, it, it uh, 
you had the smaller length barrels. You know, you get the five and a half inch instead of the seven and a half. You know, more convenient. And probably more uh, cowboys, more civilians carried uh, the five and a half inch, you know, than the seven and a half. Although I, I like both, I like all three. And then you even had smaller Glocks, right? The Glock uh, 26 with a, whatever the length barrel on that thing is. And then you had the, on the Colt, again, you have even a shorter barrel, uh, four and three quarters. So as they became so popular, then, you know, more customization and barrel lengths became uh, the order of the day with both of them. And, you know, and lots of different calibers. You know, this is just, I, I went with a nine on this because these are kind of the original Glocks. For, if you don't know for a long time, that was the only caliber available. The Glock 17 and in nine millimeter for years. And, uh, and the Colt 45, 45 Colt, what we started out with. And that was the caliber uh, initially. And I think for a couple, three years. You know, so before you start having your others, your 4440s and, and other calibers, 3840 and whatnot, 41 and lots of others, 38. So that's kind of the, the, the thing there. The point is lots of other great guns back in the 1800s and in the 1980s and 1990s and, and today in this vein, but whether you like blocks or not, you know, uh, go to the range or stop the next 30 people going into a gun shop or coming out of a gun shop or a gun show or, or cops or just anybody. And boy, there's a, what, a 50-50 chance probably they're carrying a Glock. And if it's a, a police officer, probably what a 75% chance. Uh, so that kind of market saturation for whatever the reason is, I know some people that don't like them, that's ah, only because you get a good price or you're brainwashed or you're a fanboy, whatever rationale you want to use, you, you can't deny the, the, uh, the market penetration of the Glock pistol and you know, for the last what, 30 or so years. And then the same with the Colt single action, other good ones, but just prolific in use and sales and the numbers. So I think it was close to a couple hundred thousand, you know, by the end of uh, the 1800s. Uh, so, uh, cause I've got one that made 19, well, this one, 1902 and uh, 222,000, you know. So, uh, you know, over a couple hundred thousand uh, before 1900 even. So, and, and those are big numbers for that time period. So I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but I just thought I'd point out some of those similarities if it had never occurred to you. And again, if I can shoot just a couple more shots, I'll shoot the, the 19. How's that? Can I do that? And uh, I just want to help you in your decision making. I'll put five more in this before we let you go. Uh, because, you know, either one might make you a pretty good choice for, as a carry gun as you shop around, really. You might find 45 Colt ammo easier than 9 millimeter these days as we record this. Who knows? Let's put five in this one. Yeah. In fact, as you see me around town, there's a good chance I'll be carrying one or the other. Might be carrying this Glock 19 in a holster, or I might just be carrying this as my sidearm. Because either one works pretty well, I'll have to say. Yeah, boy. Either one will get you through. <laughs> either one works, so you might see me with either one. Glock or Colt single action. Okay, so I hope that helps you in your decision making. Okay? That's not what this was about. You know that, right? I just like to have fun. So two very popular firearms, and uh, I just thought I'd point that out. Okay? Life is good. Uh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey. Didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips, so go check them out. Also, Ballastol, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out.
And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.